The movie begins with a few U.S. Army SEALs emerging, murdering some insurgents. They hunt for someone, as they tour through the ruins of that building in the streets of Aleppo. Once they clear the building, Agent Ritter appears, and instructs them to liberate a CIA hostage held by Syrian government troops. After receiving a few brief information from that agent, Team Chief John Kelly relocates his team to a different a part of town. They launch an attack on a suspected building, and liberate the captives. When they finish the mission, John Kelly searches the pockets of a dead Syrian soldier, and discovers via his phone data that he was an ex-Russian army soldier. Agent Ritter requests that he abandon this matter, and move as soon as possible. A Russian unit shoots an RPG at them as they were leaving. Kelly and his squad conduct a counter-offensive. They quickly recognized that it was not a safe haven for Syrian forces, but rather a Russian arms depot. During the hard battle, they and the liberated hostage flee to the building's top, where a chopper awaits them. Aboard the chopper, Kelly blames Ritter for his men's deaths at the hands of the Russians. They will soon blast the building and flee. Next, one of Kelly's team members, who had recently retired from the military and is spending time with his family at home, is hit by a van outside his house. After a while, another retired team member is assassinated on the road by some unknown assailant. These were among the troops that helped liberate the CIA hostage in Aleppo three years ago. While Kelly and his wife are getting ready to sleep in their bedroom at night, he leaves her to sleep and goes to the sofa to eat snacks and listen to music. His laptop eventually shuts down. He realizes that the power in his house has gone off. He hears footsteps approaching and a door opening, so he pulls his revolver from the drawer and follows the footsteps. He discovers that several people have broken into his home. They murder his pregnant wife, as Kelly murders them one by one. He is ready to kill the last one, when he gets shot and wounded. As the attacker runs out of shots, he flees the house. Kelly crawls inside his bedroom to see his wife but she is no longer alive. He is being brought to the hospital. After a while, he finally wakes up. His Navy SEAL captain, Karen Greer pays him a visit, and informs him of the murders of his wife and two former SEAL comrades. She also informs him of the security measures in place for the remaining SEAL team members. He informs her that the assailants at his home were not ordinary folks or robbers, but rather experts. They went there on purpose. He requests that she do him a favor by providing him with the identities of the attackers, but she claims that she knows nothing. She advises him to rest, because the case is being investigated. Kelly finally recovers, and joins a U.S. Army Special Forces team. Meanwhile, the Secretary of Defense sets up a meeting with Agents Ritter and Greer. During the discussion, Agent Ritter informs them that the attackers are Russians. He claims they are Russian soldiers and members of the Russian Federation's FSB, or Federal Security Force. He tells the secretary that Kelly and his crew had attacked the FSB in Aleppo a few years back, in order to release the CIA hostage, and the Russians are acting in retaliation for the strike. He also informs them that the CIA had decided not to take any action in response to these instances. He comes to the conclusion that they will not cause any problems with the assailants or Russia, continuing to investigate the matter. Karen returns to Kelly after some time has passed, and informs him that they are the Russians who murdered his wife and pals. She also informs him that the CIA will halt the probe. She does him the courtesy of providing him with the files of their passport facilitators in the United States. Andre is the one who assisted them in entering the United States. With all the necessary information in his possession, the protagonist immediately sets to work to avenge the death of his wife and old friends. Next, Kelly walks to Andre's office while pretending to be inebriated. Andre's security stops him and sends him away. Eventually, the protagonist returns to his pickup and decides to pursue them with his car. On the highway, he chases Andre's car and collides with him at the turn. He blocks his car in such a way that Andre can't get out of the car. He sets fire to his car and gets into it. He threatens Andre while shooting him in the leg, in order to reveal the identity of the fourth Russian member of the squad. Andre finally reveals that the name is Viktor Rykov, after some struggle. The protagonist then exits the vehicle and is apprehended by police. Karen pays a visit to Kelly in prison. She informs him that he is in serious trouble for murdering Andre. Everyone in the office is upset with his behavior, 
since now Russian is going to take action. However, he tells her that he is going to kill everyone implicated in his wife's murder. He also informs her that he knows something that they don't, and that if they want to know that information, they should get him released from jail. When Kelly returns to his cell, he notices some movement outside. An officer requests that he stand and face the wall, so that he can be taken out of the prison for further inquiry, but he refuses. Then three officers try to drag him away. He fights back and threatens to kill one of the officers. The protagonist orders them to leave the prison. Soon, a U.S. Marshal arrives in the jail and invites Kelly to accompany them. He provides Kelly a phone to talk on. He picks up the phone and begins speaking. Karen talks to him and asks to accompany the Marshal. The protagonist joins them for a closed meeting at an unnamed military installation. He is requested to tell them the secret information he has, so he reveals the name Viktor Rykov. He is asked to identify the photographs that resemble Viktor. However, Agent Ritter informs them that he has died. Nonetheless, Kelly recognizes him in the photographs. Later, Ritter informs them that Viktor is a Russian spy, who is involved in a variety of activities in the United States. He also informs them that he was a longtime target of the CIA, but that they were unable to apprehend him. The secretary informs them that Victor is now hiding in Russia. Kelly demands that he be allowed to accompany the squad to catch him, and the secretary agrees. Following that, Lieutenant Commander Karen, Kelly, and his staff prepare to board a passenger plane bound for Russia. Agent Ritter arrives and informs them that he will meet them in Moscow. Kelly is suspicious of him, so he decides to be more cautious with Ritter. Subsequently, Karen and Kelly board a plane bound for Russia. When they approach Russian Federation territory, their plane is suddenly intercepted by the Russian Air Force. The Russians request that they land promptly at the Murmansk airport. When the pilot refuses, the Russians attack their plane's wing. The plane crashes into the Barents Sea, landing on Russian territory. Kelly and the rest of the team attempt to escape the water. They shelter in a Russian safe house, surviving aboard a boat. After some time, they travel to Murmansk to another safe house, where Ritter is plotting something with two Russians and money on the table. Kelly accuses Ritter of treachery, and forces him to reveal his true motives. Ritter tells him that he arrived after the plane assault, when they assumed they were dead, and that he has come to finish the mission of apprehending Victor. He also informs him that he hired those two Russians to guide them to Victor. Kelly is about to shoot while choking him. Karen arrives and begs him not to lose his cool. The protagonist manages to control his emotions, and eventually spares Ritter's life. Agent Ritter then leads them to Victor's flat. Kelly arrives to discover Victor's bodyguards already dead. He notices Victor, who is dressed in a suicide jacket, waiting for them. Victor greets Kelly, and informs that he knew that the protagonist and his men were on their way to Russia to kill him. Victor assures him that he was not the one who planned to kill Kelly and his pregnant wife. Kelly keeps listening, and Victor claims that he and Kelly are in the same boat, and that someone led them here to murder themselves. Kelly then asks him to listen to him, but he pushes the button and blows himself up. A sniper shoots Dallas, one of Kelly's squad members, after the explosion. They are having difficulty locating the sniper. Soon, they figure it out in some way and kill him. However, in the meantime, another sniper begins to fire on them. Karen and Kelly eventually track down the enemies and murder them in action. Meanwhile, Russian police and military have encircled the residential complex. Kelly directs his troops to run through the back of the building as he turns to face the cops on the rooftop. He detonates a device, killing many police officers, while his men successfully flee the apartment building in a van. Kelly keeps enemies busy with him while others escape. He also fights the military men who are coming to capture him on the apartment stairs. The protagonist eventually escapes as well, disguising himself as a Russian army troop with a tear gas mask on his face. Next, he arrives at the coordinates in a Russian vehicle. Karen greets him and drives him to a boat. He swiftly departs Russia with his remaining team members, Karen and Ritter. Kelly questions Agent Ritter on the boat about Victor and his employment at the CIA. Ritter tells him about his career. He also instructs him to carry a money bag on the boat and vanish somewhere in the world. He promises to report him dead in the operation to the CIA office. Kelly thanks him 
and apologizes for previously mistaking him as a traitor. After some time, when Secretary Clay was in a restaurant's restroom, the protagonist appears. He confronts him with his genuine motives for sending him to Russia, bringing up Victor's pawn conversation. The protagonist kidnaps him in his car when he can't answer. Kelly threatens to kill his family if he does not reveal the truth. Secretary Clay finally explains why he assigned him to this task. He goes on to imply that US-Russian connections should be limited in order to help the economy. Following these events, they have ample reason to threaten the peoples of both countries with war. He further claims that this brings the American people together against their shared adversary, Russia. He informs him that he and his colleagues were merely bait. Therefore, they plan to lead them all to the same place, to kill each other. In this way, the governments of both countries would not be suspected of anything. The protagonist drives the car into the river within the middle of his talk, drowning himself and Secretary Clay. Karen then pulls Kelly out of the river. Kelly hands over the recorded device with Clay and Karen's confessing comments to the CIA. Karen drops him off at an airport and offers him a new passport. She begs him to begin over with a new name and now not forget about her. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.